Look at the picture. See the skull. Visible Frankenstein controls. The Brain Thoughts Broadcasting Radio. The Frankenstein Earphone Radio. The latest new skull reforming to contain all Frankenstein controls. Hello. All right. Um. We just start the episode with that. Ah, uh, hello. <laughs> Hiya, boss. Hi. <laughs> hey, Lois. That was a terrible... I didn't even... That was not even a Peter Griffin impression. I just said, hey, Lois, and a kind of an accent? <laughs> yeah. Hello, Lois. <laughs> hello, Lois. It is your husband, Peter Griffin. Yeah. It, is, it is I, Peter. And I am your dog, Brian Griffin. And I am the baby, Stewie Griffin. <laughs> and here's Chris. My name is Meg. It was only because of the monotone delivery, but the the only one of those that sounded like the character was the Brian. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's just because you did it in monotone, yeah. <laughs> which is the closest to his speaking voice. Oh, here comes Quagmire. Listen to him. Giggity, 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 giggity. <laughs> he sure is a card. Here is he, Cleveland. He is no longer in the show. Boy, that Quagmire sure likes to do the essay, isn't doesn't he? <laughs> the essay? Sexual assault. Oh. <laughs> Think of all of the jokes that won't age poorly oh, about his you repeated... Like, I thought you meant like YouTube essayists. <laughs> like a YouTube essay. Or like That's... you were speaking Spanish slang or something. Oh! Hey, essay. <laughs> hey, essay. <laughs> I'll write a turn paper. So, besides uh, really bad Family Guy impressions, who are we? What are we doing? Uh, welcome to Frankenstein Control, and I can't... Uh, I'm your I'm your host, uh, Taylor Russell, and I can't stop looking at the Philadelphia Experiment possum you have on top of your uh, <laughs> on top of your computer there, Ada. He's a finger puppet. Oh, it's a finger puppet. <laughs> yeah. Okay, was, that's why it's cut off at the midsection and looks like it's screaming. As was yeah. the bat she gave me to play with earlier. Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, I he, see that bat there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this little possum just got teleported into my computer case, and now he sits there screaming. It's like those people that got fused with that battleship and that uh, horrible... The Philadelphia Experiment. Yeah, that's the one. I knew you'd remember what it was called, because I didn't. That's not a real thing, is it? Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, We'll talk about it right after I also introduce a fellow sufferer of the Philadelphia Experiment to this day, B-Rai. I'm the man formerly known as B-Rai. I'm still currently known as B-Rai, but I was formerly known as B-Rai also. (laughs) And to the left of me, as always, is Ada. Yes, uh, you may not recognize me since I have been fused with a... uh, a uh, mandolin vegetable cutter. Oh, God. Uh, but please uh, make sure to hug me as, as much as you normally would and just uh, <laughs> avoid the blades and the uh, uh, parts of me that push you towards the blades. Mandolins scare me. Can yeah. you can you help me peel some carrots after this? God, no. Why would you ask me that? What the fuck is wrong with you? How embarrassing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. Uh, the Philadelphia Experiment. It's like, uh, it's that thing yeah, it's you the, described. It's uh, that thing where it's like... The Navy Experiment where they were testing out like teleportation or no, they were trying to, I think it was something not as severe as that, like they were testing out some way to like hide a ship using... We were just trying to turn it on and that happened. Mm. <laughs> I think they were trying to find, I could be completely wrong, but they were trying to find a way to like cloak a ship yeah. using mm-hmm. like a uh, uh, electromagnetic coat on the, on the on the whatever. Yeah. And then it teleported the ship somewhere and then when they came back... The crew was fused the, to the bulkheads. Yeah, and, exactly. Exactly. There were like half men who were like half fused into the steel plating in the ship and they were screaming and it was terrible and stupid people think it was real. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was all over X back in the old day. Oh, for sure. The first time I ever saw it was when um, uh, History Channel was just starting to get on its shit. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's true shit that it's stuck in these days. <laughs> yeah, and they had shows where they talked about the Philadelphia Experiment and all those other mysterious happenings. Yeah, exactly. Mysteries at the Museum. History's Mysteries, yeah. as it was called. That was the show I that fucking, I always watched. History's I, Mysteries. I liked History's Mysteries. I actually did like History's so Mysteries. So was the... This Philadelphia experiment, was it just purely a work of fiction, or is this based off of something? It is semi-classified and, and half real, I think. Mm. Um, I, I, I'm actually not sure on... So much crazy, awful shit has happened that I no longer uh, am as grounded in reality as I used to think that I was. Yeah. My, and guess, I, my guess is that there was some experiment to see if they could cloak a boat using some sort of wild, wacky technique, mm-hmm. and then somebody, like 
<laughs> somebody tripped on a live wire while they were drinking coffee and they got electrocuted. Mm-hmm. And then so somebody's like, you see, somebody yeah. died and it's been classified. Yeah. And so that's what I think is just people, you know, going nuts over something Making mountains out of molehills. Yeah. Listen, I were talking about the... I'm, I'm sure you've seen the memes where it's like 10-year-old me after uh, reading about the Bermuda Triangle. It's like, why are we not doing anything about yeah. this? Yeah. <laughs> you don't have any frame of re- reference for that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah. are we not investigating this? Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be a problem that will personally affect me yeah. as I grow older. That was uh, and quicksand too. The quicksand. I expected yeah. to encounter quicksand a lot yeah. more than I have. That in was real me life. when I was uh, when I found out that one day our sun's gonna explode. Mm-hmm. Well, we have a plan for that, right? Well, it's not gonna explode. Well, I guess if you count it as, it it does expel Semantics. a lot of its matter while it goes into the red giant face. So it's like an explosion, just really, really, really slow. A yeah. slow motion explosion. A slow motion explosion, like that episode of Invader Zim. Yeah, I like that one. <laughs> it's very silly. Yeah, our uh, the whole inner planets are all just going to get t- roasty toasty. But the fun thing is, is that red giant stars, uh, they're so. Um, Opposite of dense. Help me. What's what would you say is the opposite of the word dense? Uh, no, certainly not any of us because we can't even think of a word. Wispy. Uh, ethereal. Uh, Undense. Well, okay. It w- <laughs> it wouldn't be dense enough mm-hmm. with energy to actually disintegrate the planets that it absorbs. Mm. So mostly, it's just like envelops them in kind of like, oh, that's pretty hot, but not enough to like melt them or vaporize them or anything you might think. Uh-huh. That's cool. Like if we were to throw our planet into the sun now, it would. <laughs> just, oh my god! <laughs> but uh, you know, just. Uh, red giant stars, it's not like they gained matter, you know? Yeah. So they become, you know, when you make something big but don't change its mass, yeah. it's not very dense. Yeah. There was. So, yeah, it's interesting to think about. I mean, everyone would be dead still, but, yeah. you know. There's a. Especially because that's going to happen like millions and millions of years. Billions of years from now, yeah. After we've all, like, already started a war over the dumbest shit possible and nuked ourselves into, uh, you know, long long before we ever become a spacefaring yeah. civilization and escape. Mm, you mean long before whatever comes after us becomes a facefaring yeah. spacefaring organization? Yeah, once once the squids evolve. Yeah, yes. once the squ- uh, squids will get this shit figured out. Yeah. <laughs> Unless they're literally early Kyler. I was about to say they're gonna evolve into the squid <laughs> yeah. billies. Google spice shit building and what for do we do it? It turns out the great filter is being a redneck, <laughs> mm. or, or is having rednecks is is the great filter. Yeah. All of convergent evolution dictates that most species end up having rednecks. There was a NASA um, destroys us all. <laughs> there was uh, actually there's a book with a similar plot line. Um, it's it's by sci-fi author Larry Niven, and I believe he wrote it with, in conjunction with another um, famous sci-fi author. But it's called The Moden God's Eye. Mm-hmm. And I've it, heard of The Moden God's Eye. Isaac Arthur uh, refers to it a lot. He might have been the other person who I don't remember who. No, the other Isaac person. Arthur doesn't write books. He he does videos about futurism. Okay, good. Then that is not who I, I had no idea who Isaac Arthur was. He's great, uh, and he talks like this. Ah, he I talks gotcha. like Homestar One Old. <laughs> <laughs> and and for a really long time, I just couldn't like deal with that. And then, like, I kind of got over my ableism, and, uh, yeah, his videos are great. <laughs> well, I shall make it a point to look them up, because that sounds cool. But yeah. the um, the book series I was talking about, I, I think there is a, a sequel to it, but Moat and God's Eye, it's about uh, humanity discovering this far-off planet that probably has life on it, and we go to check it out. And it turns out, like, we have developed, like, faster-than-light travel with these, like, warp drives that work off of these things called... Um, I, Emerson points or something, something. They're named after the scientist that discovered they're named them. Named after Ralph Waldo Emerson. Yeah, yeah. I, I could also have the name completely and totally fucking wrong. They're named I, after Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Yes, yeah. yes. That's that a, that I, sounds. I was trying to form a joke of base. <laughs> <laughs> there's also Lake points and Palmer points. I, I, Pal- dude, Palmer points actually sounds like something you'd hear yeah. in, a, in a sci-fi story. It does. <laughs> but basically, they, I, I, I might have had the name completely fucking wrong too. But uh, it's something like that. 
that. And it's like these points in space that can be used as like way gates. Mass relays? Ma- sort of, but it's... Oh my it, god, was Mass Effect just a ripoff of Moten God's Eye? Probably, but I, I don't remember exactly the... the it, Did it they actually, accidentally blow up Pluto and there was a mass relay? No. Oh, okay. Um, it's It's basically has to do with... Uh, space travel can work like we can fold space, but only with these in, in conjunction with these certain points. And like every galaxy Ooh. has a couple of them. Galactic ley lines. Basically that. And the species that is on this planet that they, they call them the Modis because they're uh, Modis. Because they yeah. go up to you and they go Modi Odio. Yeah, Oli 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 O. Modi Odi 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 O. And you're like, oh my god. That'll be the worst, is if we make first contact with aliens, and they're not hideous, they're not horrible conquerors. They're just, just really, really annoying. They're really fucking annoying. <laughs> yeah. That would be the worst. That would be way worse than them just being scary and, or warmongery or whatever. They, they show us some of their music, and it's just like the, the Vuvuzela tone. <laughs> <laughs> and they listen to it for hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... The, they, the, the Modis, as they are called, live on this planet that's in the um, orbit of some kind of a giant star, and, like, they're... It, that they call God's Eye, and they're... I don't remember... Look all this shit up on the Wikipedia page if you're really curious. Or God's read the book Eye yourself. is probably a nebula or a galaxy of some sort that formed funny. Something like that. It's like an eye-like shape. I think it's that, and then their planet is like a speck in the eye, mm. or so, which is why the book is called The Mode in God's so Eye. So it's a, it's a first contact story. It's a first contact story. Okay. And it turns out that this species has had several uh, rising... T- uh, Rick and Morty uh, episode-esque rises to like spacefaring capabilities and then phenomenal crashes from like an endless cycle of um, like wars and shit. They just continuously uh, rediscover the same shit and then nuke themselves back to the Stone Age repeatedly. Mm. And it's because if so, they... it's like the time lapse in Futurama. It is ex- exactly. It's exactly like that. <laughs> the what? The when Fry gets uh, frozen for the first time and it shows the time lapse of all mm. the years. Oh going yeah, yeah, by. yeah. Like all the and yeah. Multiple times civilization ends and then rebuilds again. Yeah. 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 It's like that, um, and it's it's because of Modi physiology. Like once they enter their reproductive phase, I think they reproduce asexually. But if they don't reproduce when they're in their reproductive phase of life, they'll die. Oh! So all of them, of course, have huge incentive to reproduce, which causes massive overpopulation, which causes wars for resources, which nukes them back to the Stone Age every time. Mm. Wow! And the, the, <laughs> about, um, talk about your biological incentives for. Uh... Trying re- reaching real hard to figure out this crazed biological incentive for constant wars when we do just fine. We do fucking each other up for no fucking reason. <laughs> no reason whatsoever. We just fuck each other. Oh, yeah, resource security. Fuck off. It's because we're horrible fucking apes who can't grow beyond our own hubris. Exactly. Um, but where I was going with this, your your thing thinking about the red dwarf star and within oh, yeah, the yeah. conditions inside of it made me... Um, did I say red dwarf? I meant red giant. Red giant. I knew, I knew what you meant is okay. the thing. I knew what you meant and I think everyone did in our oh, audience. Oh, man. I hope thing. I... Uh, but, uh, Ada, I edit, edit this back. Red giant. <laughs> so if you, sa- if you thought that sounded weird at the beginning, now you know why. Yes. <laughs> Um, but it turns out they independently of themselves discovered like the same kind of warp drive and it's it's like it's meant to be like implied that it's the only kind that could physically exist and so if you have the mind to understand physics you would in- inevitably discover and invent that kind mm. of engine yourself mm. uh, and they are smart enough to have done this several times uh, throughout their various collapses and and several developments times um, however the only like ley line point in their galaxy is inside their own sun. So Aww. they warp there and immediately explode. That's really funny. <laughs> That's and, so shit. Like, no one has ever come back. They've been trying for, like, eons to escape their planet mm. and, and, like, space fare out of there, but they just, they're, like, they're, none of their teams ever come back because they just warp into the sun and die. Yeah, yeah they can't make, <laughs> they can't make um, a, a sun-proof spaceship. But because uh, humanity has had constant interstellar wars, we have, inter- uh, we have uh, energy shielding on our ships. So we can Ugh. fly through that point and live and then make it to their planet. Huh. And they want that technology roll bad. Yeah. Uh, which is the um, crux of the plot. Okay. Um, plot. Yes. And there's like a whole bunch of different varieties of their species. They're, they have like a, a rigid caste system where you're like biologically suited for certain tasks. And like mm. that's your role. Like there's like... 
uh, ones that are like ambassadors, ones that are warriors, ones that are workers, and like they hide the existence of the warrior ones for a really long time because they don't want us to know about that. Oh. And there's like little ones that are cute, but like you know, a lot more dangerous than you're thinking. And oh. they're they're mostly their danger. They're not bad. It's it's just that like they're they're desperate. Yeah. And things get violent and scary when they're desperate. Yeah. And like they're trying I think they're almost on the verge of another collapse when we discover them and they're like we need this spacefaring shit right now so we can have another planet to go colonize and not have to nuke ourselves to <laughs> Jesus and back again. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh that is major plot spoilers for that book that was probably <laughs> written in 1974. Yeah. <laughs> I always wanted to write a science fiction story of like this colony ship that um, you know is is you know the first colony ship, you know, in a series of of however many that you know the first ones ever, and they were sent to a, a far off star, and it's going to take them multiple multiple generations to get to that far off star. And so as that, you know, the that gigantic journey is taking place, meanwhile back on Earth, they cracked uh, FTL travel. So by the time that the generation ship gets to the planet they were headed to, future Earthlings are already there. Yeah. I'm like, so, uh... What took you guys so long? What took you so long? (laughs) (laughs) And there's a number of ways you could frame it to where, like, maybe they're getting uh, uh, readings ahead of, like, oh, my God, there's, there's life on that planet. We're, we're getting uh, life signs on the planet. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> they look just like us. We've discovered aliens. <laughs> you played yourself. <laughs> yes, you played yourself. And then they land on the planet, and then none of the people look like humans because they've evolved. Mm. They advanced so much of technology. They're like half cyborgs, and then they're like specialized for the environment of the planet. Yeah. So like they modified themselves instead of creating you know suits to to live in and shit like that. <laughs> so they just look like fucking aliens. And then you can get a whole like if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck kind of thing. And turns out it's man. Yeah, it turns out it's man. Like it'd be a whole interesting situation. Depending that's how a, you spin it, it could be either pretty dire or really funny. Or... That's a good Twilight Zoney kind of premise. Yeah, there. yeah that's, that's yeah. kind of. We were talking about Rod Sterling stabbing Japanese people. Uh, no. <laughs> He was a soldier in World War II. Yeah. And he was profoundly anti-war because of his experiences in World War II. Yeah, he and, probably stabbed a man, and it changed his life. Uh, he shot... It, I don't know if he stabbed anybody, but he, he, like... A bunch of weird shit happened to him during the war. Like, I think somebody... One of his friends was decapitated by a falling, like, food crate that was dropped for aid uh, for them. <laughs> Imagine yeah. your best friend being killed by a food crate meant to meant to sustain you for the rest of your stay in this foreign country. Yeah, it'd be pretty fucked up, wouldn't it? Yeah, I imagine he'd be playing one of those fucking Call of Duty games where they got the loot crates dropping from the sky and he'd fucking shit himself. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, he... he hates microtransactions. Not yeah. he's he's over the fucking crate thing. I don't know. Submitted for your approval. I purchased a finished game already, and now you expect me to pay to finish it further. (laughs) Submit it for your approval. The game was designed from the ground up to make it difficult and obnoxious, unless you pay the price. But that price could be too much in the Twilight Zone. (laughs) (laughs) Submitted for your approval. I keep losing to these 12-year-olds who have their mom's credit cards and have bought all the fucking (laughs) assault rifles. I'm just trying to game when I get home from work. I don't have the time to do the the money. They continually remind me how they will fornicate with my mother. (laughs) Perhaps if I could send them all to some planet where humans have super evolved past the point of... (laughs) (laughs) Then we'd see who'd be laughing. (laughs) Spoiler alert, it would be me. (laughs) In the Twilight Zone. So, uh, recently, I, I did some traveling. Also, it's Rod Serling, not Rod Sterling. I know, I always want to say Rod Sterling, and it's Rod Serling. It yeah, is It is Rod Serling. I thought it's it was Sterling. Sterling. Nope, it's huh. Serling. Your Rod brain Sterling. fills in the T. Right? Because... Like, like, like Red uh, Red Skeleton. Yeah. I yeah. always thinking it's Red Skeleton. Yeah, no, it's... <laughs> Red Skeleton! Red Skeleton! <laughs> but we, uh, uh, I did some traveling recently. I went down to Richmond to uh, visit my parents. Um... And uh, uh, today, actually, I I came back up and um, had some interesting 
uh, things happen on the way on the on the drive back. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I stopped at a um, uh, a rest stop to pee, mm-hmm. and uh, washing my hands. Um, uh, it's like the hand washing station. This one's this the ones where like it's a big basin. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So like yeah. you're you're you don't have your own individual sink. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, the, the trough uh, effect. Yeah, and uh, next to me was an old an older woman, and uh, to my right was a presumably Muslim woman in the in the full. Um, uh, shroud traditional yeah right well, I, I know they have a specific word for it but is it burqa check wikipedia really quick well there's I a know, bunch of there's a bunch of different modalities yeah. of them i know yeah. burqa is is a, a form of that oh but okay but by 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 the okay i don't know if it's the, the full thing point is her whole body was covered mm. so i i just realized that like there's an old white lady a trans person that only half passes and a Muslim person all together in this thing. I'm like, this feels like a joke of some. Th- this kind. feels like a really like horrible political cartoon. Yeah, that's about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> like if, if you if you drew like me and the Muslim woman as like ugly as possible or something, yeah, yeah. as then, offensive as yeah, possible, then like th- this this would be a like a Ben Garrison piece or something. <laughs> ben Garrison is is the one I'm thinking of, right? That's like a political cartoon. That sounds that's, right. That's really far right. That sounds right, Ben Garrison. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think Ben Garrison's the right okay, one. Okay, yeah. But then again, uh, or is there, or are they the art- artist that makes really spot-on parodies of political cartoons? I don't know. Look it up. <laughs> the, the, the one who keeps drawing pictures of Statue of Liberty crying. Oh, yeah. In the background of different <laughs> yeah. things. I think I, that guy works for The Onion. Yeah. Like Dan Schneider or something. I don't know. Who's <laughs> Dan Schneider? He's a pedophile. Oh, my God. Really? Right? <laughs> Wait, what? Isn't that the, the guy? From Nickelodeon, that's working oh, on my Carly. Oh my fucking! Oh my, <laughs> you, wait, hold on, hold on. Who hold is on. anybody? I don't want to fuck up Dan Schneider's name if this isn't the guy we're thinking of. Dan, Fan Schneider, Dan <laughs> Schneider. Oh my god, it is! Okay. Oh yeah, and he was the fat guy. He was the fat manager in Good Burger. Yeah. Oh my god, that was the like, oh! We didn't know the entire time. We had no idea that the <laughs> the, the 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 fat manager character was also uh, foot fetish pedoman. Yeah. Oh no. Well, well I don't I don't want to talk about that. Oh. But uh, I did confirm it. Yes, Ben Garrison is is an alt right cartoonist. Okay. That um, see that name sounds right. Yeah. That that sounds that sounds uh, correct. But I made that observation to myself and was just washing my hands and the uh the older lady looks at me and she's like you're the only smart one here (laughs) it's because i was wearing a mask Mm. and she wasn't and she's like uh i have one but i i I left it at uh in the car (laughs) and she's quiet for a bit and she looks at me and she just says it's only gonna get worse uh, but you know, <laughs> but the Whoa. thing is, the <laughs> thing is, oh my god! I would much rather have my encounters with the aged be portentous and ominous. Yes, cryptic. But on the right side of the understanding of things. Yeah. Rather than a horrible alt-right encounter with one of them. <laughs> just did I just did I just meet like a messenger of death or something? <laughs> not to not to steal a this joke. Is important for things to come. N- not not to steal a joke from Dane Cook, but like that's kind of like being at an airport and then somebody just walks up to you and goes, "Don't get on the flight," and then walks away and disappears by the time you look back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, oh. I'm me, Ma Clemens, and I'll be your psychopomp this evening. <laughs> Psycho is that from Dune? A psychopomp is uh, like a spiritual guide. I mean, it's, it would have either been a spiritual it's guide. From Dante's Inferno. Yes. Oh. Well, that's the most common example of one. Well, it's also um, uh, part four of JoJo. Uh, main character has a psychopomp bador. <laughs> Ooh. Don't talk shit about his hair. <laughs> oh, that's true. He's going to run in and punch the shit out of you. He's very sensitive about it. So, <laughs> but anyway, on, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you, on, you uh, met, you basically met Virgil yeah. from, from Dante's Inferno, not from uh, Devil May Cry. <laughs> yes. So as I, as I was driving home, um, my phone's um, headphone port, I think is like losing contact. Oh shit. So, oh, um, get a, um, get a air 
canned air. I've tried that. Oh, it, it isn't working. So uh, it it'll it'll work, but I like have to hold the cord in a certain position, and it doesn't always want to cooperate and oh, stay shit. in that position. So I was I was listening to like the one CD I had, right? But I listened that to half of that on the way up. So I'm I just like I don't want silence. I'm gonna turn the radio on. Oh no! Oh, no. Um, and <laughs> if you can get NPR, it's a good time. But yeah, I I didn't want to fiddle with it too much because I was driving. And like, you NPR vert? Yes. So I was just kind of pressing random buttons until I got to Q94, the 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 hip station in Richmond. Oh my god! <laughs> <W-K-N-T>. <laughs> <But> the- <laughs> <laughs> but oh my <laughs> god! The, the the first song that was playing on it was the the Little John song with the uh burr, 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 from, yeah! from like twenty years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I realized I'd never just actually listened to that song. Not a parody of it through. or like yeah. in a movie I, I or heard something. I've heard about it. I've heard I've heard the like opening riff and everything. Or it's, I mean it's it's it was it's in, throughout the whole song. It was in every every movie and show the year it came out. Yeah, so. yeah for real. Oh, uh, so I listened to that, and like some Doja Cat song came on. Mm-hmm. Wow, well, Doja Cat's uh, on the radio now. Doja yeah. Coin. Yeah, where where something like "Let Me Be Your Your Woman," but oh yeah, Alyssa loves that song. She let me be Uma. Yeah, she says it. Yeah, <laughs> that just reminds. I, me. I was I wasn't sure that it was in English at first. Yeah, it's I was. Um, it took me a couple of listens to that song. To I didn't know that was Doja. I thought that was like Rihanna for some reason. I think it was Doja. Cat. It is that, Doja because okay. Lissa loves Doja. The okay. title of that song just reminds me of that one track on the UHF album where it's "Let Me Be Your Hog." <laughs> It's like 30 seconds long at most, and it's because it's just meant to be filler music in the establishing shot of, like, this guy's pool, and he's mm. got a radio by the pool, and that's what's playing on the radio. Yeah. And, but they included it on the album, and we're, <laughs> instead of just choosing a song to play on the radio, Weird Al sung it, and it's called Let Me Be Your Hog, and he makes <laughs> piggy noises, and the song ends with him going, As it should. <laughs> Weird Al understands musical comedy. Yeah, Weird Al is a funny man. But so listening to this like inoffensive normal pop music, I'm just like, I felt like Jerry in that Rick and Morty episode where he's like, ah, oh, human, human music. music. This is human music. <laughs> oh, I like it. And then as I was, I was going from, uh, like, I, I was past Richmond by this point, hmm? uh, going up north, up here. Uh-huh. Uh, so the signal was was waning. It was oh, starting no. to get staticky. Yeah, uh, and I just like decided to ride it out until it was just static. Right. <laughs> I was deliberately not like skipping or avoiding ads because I just wanted I just wanted to experience something different. Mm-hmm. Like I, I just want to see what 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 are radio ads like these days. I haven't yeah. listened to one in like twenty years. What yeah. Are, what are radio fromps like these days? Hmm? And <laughs> the the ads combined. With the increasing static, uh, what happened is there's a Wendy's ad, and the guy's like, uh, uh, I'm here to tell you about the, the new Wendy's big, big Box. This is what this one guy said about it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you feel after you get your Wendy's Big Box. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. God, that's amazing timing. That's really good. That's really fucking funny. That's good. That's real good. I love when shit like that happens. I I wish fun shit like that happened uh, to to me when I'm like watching the TV on the on the on the treadmills and shit at the gym because I keep fucking forgetting my phone and uh, earbuds. Right. Uh, I, or rather, just my earbuds. I need my phone to get in the gym. That, that doesn't matter. Uh, I keep forgetting shit so I can just watch YouTube or whatever. I don't right. mind. Data be damned, fuck it. Um, just because TV... TV is just fucking horrible. Oh, yeah. It's horrible. It's so yeah. bad. It's agony. Yeah. It like, is, it is. It's pure agony. Like, it is How horrible. does anybody deal with that shit anymore? Yeah. Like, there's nothing good. It is so horrible to ain't, watch what we call normal good. people TV nowadays. Yeah, because it's all just commercials, buh, news, uh, or 
ghost hunting shows. Yes, what the fuck? What with all the fucking ghost hunting shows? There's so fucking They're many of them. fucking network. Why? Every uh, fucking <laughs> channel has their own brand of dipshits stumbling about with a night vision camera. And, and, and leaping at shadows and going, I feel a presence. It, <laughs> yep. It's because it's it's zero effort to, zero uh, effort to film content. any of this stuff. Zero because effort, you, you zero don't, budget. You don't have to write anything. You don't have to pay actors. You just need to get like four dipshits with uh, rudimentary <laughs> camera stuff. You... We can do it. Yeah, we can. Why do aren't it. we? Why are we doing it? We could be making th- tens of dollars. Yeah, you you need permission to go into an abandoned property, or or property plausible that is, deniability, or <laughs> or plausible just deniability. something that someone would allow you to go into. Right. Uh, have your camera, your your night vision shit. You don't have to worry about lighting anything well because you're all in the dark and it's all just green. Oh my it's God. it's like one of the probably one of the cheaper productions that one could put out yeah. consistently. Shit, <laughs> you got me there. Yeah. Have I ever talked about Dead Files? I must have talked about yeah, Dead Files. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, I've you talked about it, Dead Files about it because it's it's better than your average ghost hunting show because they actually put some effort into like providing you some fun exposition and story and Wait shit. Wait a minute, Dead Files is that the show where they recreate spooky? Uh, or, or is it a, is it I a think show it has where they some go of that. places and ghost hunt, or do they have dramatic recreations of of spooky ghost happening? A little of all of the above. Um, ah, mostly, I've, I've seen a couple of those thanks to a recent Red Letter Media episode. Oh, they're it, so funny! It looks like shit. It's really funny. Some of some of the ones where they recreate the 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 scene with the ghost are hysterical, <laughs> and the 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 people they get to play like the people in their own house, the people they were just talking to, the actors are like way more photogenic than the actual oh, rooms that's, that's that's always been <laughs> yeah the way um but no that one that one's fun because they have like especially this especially now where like if you remember like emergency 911 yeah like, that show back in the 90s where like all the actors and all the recreations were always way more attractive than the real person yeah unless the person was f- like kind of chubby yeah and they made them a fat idiot <laughs> asshole <laughs> just as gross as possible yeah they made them this gross fat over they got Dan fucker. Snyder to play them they got Dan Snyder to play them <laughs> <laughs> oh, before the subject's lost entirely, Ada, mm-hmm. you're gonna be haunted by that lady in the bathroom. Like she's gonna fucking, yeah. she was dying that night. <laughs> oh God, and I'm now, gonna be pos- and now you're haunted. Gonna, you're possessed. gonna be haunted by by the lady who forgot her mask because she got COVID. Yeah, it's like the she got the COVID from you. It's like, only gonna get worse. It's it's the old lady who worse. wants to die in Hank Hill's house in that one episode, <laughs> and everyone treats him like the asshole. Yeah, when he doesn't want a corpse in his house. I don't want her to die in my house. I don't want corpse or Hina in my home. Ah. <laughs> uh, Speaking of corpse, I'm going to go become one now. Oh, that was quick. I know. How did he do? Oh, he's, you're, you're talking. Yeah. He's I desiccated I into jerky. I just became a corpse. It does, doesn't the, the definition of corpse mean that you have to be dead? No. No? They changed that. It's fine. Oh, okay. yeah, I mean, it literally just means body. You could still be alive. You could still be in your body. You could be a, a living corpse. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, just oh. kind of pruny. Well, let, let me try it. Why has no one had... <laughs> Oh, oh, God. Oh, she just really died. She's gone. Oh, wow. How the fuck are we going to edit this episode? I don't know how she does it. Oh, shit. You're right. Quick, hold on. I got one thing. Uh-huh. A little circle, a little bit of blood. Uh, uh, sodium, 25 grams. Magnesium, 32 grams. This is... What, what, what are we going to trade in equivalent exchange? <laughs> well, be right. That's part of the fun. Ah! <laughs> I wasn't using that arm anyway. Now, even you know I am a menace. I hand you the secret to save the entire human race and the entire universe. 